What's up guys? This is the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. I have been looking forward to this gun. All these other guys, the P365s and the, the Springfield Hellcats have been out there. Finally, Smith did their double stack of their awesome, best little carry gun ever, the Shield. So here we go. Let's do some shooting and reviewing. America! What's up everybody? This video today is a pretty exciting one for me. As many of you know, Shield has released, I'm sorry, Smith & Wesson has released their Shield Plus. So here she is. You can kind of get a quick close up on the gun there. Uh, we'll cover more detail in a second. As most of you likely know, there's some similar competitors out there, similar competitors being a double stack, uh, nine millimeter compact carry gun. So guys like the Hellcats, the P365s and so forth. Uh, these have been the guns that have been released in the last year or two that everybody's really excited about. And as you probably know, uh, the original Shield is arguably the most popular carry gun ever built, but it was in a single stack. And as soon as stuff like the P365 and uh, the Hellcat were released, it kind of poo-pooed all over Smith's offering uh, because everybody at that point wanted a double stack gun. And I've been wondering, like, why is Smith dragging their feet uh, why weren't they the first ones to come up with this idea? Because they were already a market leader. Uh, why is it taking so long for those guys to release a double stack? Are they ever going to do it? And then boom, out comes this gun. So for those of us uh, that have operated a gun store, for example, like me, and have sold, I don't know how many hundreds of shields over the years that people were incredibly happy with, I was really excited to see this gun come out because I knew that it was gonna be good for the public and it was gonna make a great little gun. So let's just kind of go over, I know uh, the unboxing videos get kind of tedious, but let's just take a quick look at what you get and then we're gonna shoot and run it a little bit. Okay guys, here's what you get. So I'm not gonna go through the box. Um, you would think this gun right now, at least in the 2021 market, which is a little elevated, is a, a gun that is over $500. You'd think maybe they would come in a little bit nicer box like the Performance Centers or something, uh, but that is not the case. I suspect over time, you're gonna see prices fall on this gun uh, as it becomes more ubiquitous. And uh, right now is not a time when manufacturers are offering any specials for the dealers. That's usually how those gun prices get down is that the manufacturers offer special deals for the dealers and the dealers buy a whole bunch of them. So I'm gonna move the, the box itself out of the way and then we'll look at the gun a little closer. So there it is. This is the double stack version, obviously. That's why it's the plus. Uh, it comes with a 10 round magazine and it also comes with this 13 round mag. Uh, I can let you see how it sort of fits the hand. Now this gun is clear. We're gonna show that just to be safe. Uh, we can all agree and that this gun is clear. Uh, and we can also all agree that we can see the followers in the magazine. So there's nothing in it. So as we close this guy up, uh, that's kind of how it carries. Now this is how it sits in the hand. Uh, it's hard for me to get a good angle on this, but you can tell how it fits in my hand uh, this way with the extended grip on the 13 round version. And then as we take that out, here's the 10 round version. Uh, and there is a little bit of overhang. This is less comfortable for me. You'll see in the shooting video uh, that it tends to do a lot better whenever we uh, are running the longer magazine with it. It does of course come with uh, the manual and all that as you would expect. You almost can't get insurance or you can't get insurance without a manual. So that's what these guys are doing as well as, uh, you know, obviously you just need one. And then it comes with the Hillary Clinton mandated copy lock from the 1990s. 
And so we have boxes of those in our store. Uh, so here she is. Um, the overall length on this gun here is 6.1 inches. It does have a 3.1 inch barrel. Uh, it is a polymer grip striker fired gun. It comes with white dot sights on top. There is a version that is a night sight gun and there's also a version with the fiber optic sights in the plus series. And you can get also a plus that has the RMR cut on top and comes with uh, an RMR. I think the biggest thing about this gun, to me, the best thing about this gun is this new flat trigger. That trigger is dramatically better than the trigger on the prior versions of this gun. And it is also better than its competitors, such as the P365 or the Hellcat. So you can tell what I'll do is I'll pull the trigger here. It gets to a very predetermined break point and then click. It's very good about having a nice break on it. It's just very clean, very crisp. I don't know how heavy it is. Probably, I don't know if I had to guess, maybe about a four pound trigger. So it's nice. Uh, it works really well and it feels really good under the finger. It's, it's my favorite one, as I already mentioned, out of all this group. It comes with a thumb safety or without a thumb safety. You can buy either version of the gun. They do have a 10 round only gun uh, for those folks that are, are living behind enemy lines in some communist republic, such as California or New York. Uh, polymer grip, stainless slide, uh, and it's got what they call their Armor Knight finish on it. A-R-M-O-R-N-I-T-E, Armor Knight finish. The weight of the gun is 20 ounces, and of course, it is a nine millimeter. Uh, it's a very, very nice little offering. So let's look at disassembly really quickly. Okay, so here is the gun ready to be disassembled. Uh, the first thing you do, obviously, is check it for clear. We just did that on the video a minute ago. Then you're going to pull your trigger and make sure that you don't have any pressure on the spring itself, uh, which should probably actually come after pulling the slide back because you have to pull the slide back and then push down on the, uh, I guess I will call this the disassembly release lever. I'm sure there's a proper word for this that you guys can comment for down there. I'm not gonna call it the slide release because that's your slide release. So now that we've done that, we're going to let it go we're going to take tension off of the striker and you can see that it comes right apart. Then, like almost every other semi-auto, uh, there is a spring mechanism right here. So we can take that out and then the barrel comes out like this, like so. That is how almost every semi-auto handgun disassembles uh, in one flavor or another. Now Glocks have pull downs here, some other brands have those disassembly levers uh, like that. So that's how it comes apart. And then it goes back together effectively in the same way. We are going to put the barrel back in it. And then once we put the barrel back in that is crawling away there, we're going to put the springs back in. Uh, so double look at the spring. Sorry, I'm kind of working around the camera so it's not super easy. And then she goes back together. You have to line your grooves up. See, you've got your uh, rails here that the, the slide actually lives on. And then you just make sure that everything lines back up real good. Give it a little bit of a uh, tug there. And I'm having a little bit of a tough time since it's mildly hung up. Must be too, yeah, see what happened? My spring was just a little too far out. But to make sure it gets in the groove really good down there. And then once it's in there, it should go right back together. We don't ever want to force anything, obviously. Oh, got a little off camera there, sorry about that. And it goes back into place. We're going to lock the slide back. And then the, the uh, disassembly lever goes back into place. So there we go, back together, everything works, pull the trigger, good to go. Everybody looks good. All right, so we've seen the gun, we've seen kind of what you get with it. 
let's uh, move on and look at some shooting. All right, so we're gonna run this little shield. Right now I have a magazine full of 10 rounds of 115 grain Winchester white box. So I'm just gonna bounce around and see how this thing shoots. We're at about uh, probably seven or eight yards right now. Like I say in other videos, most of your, since this is a defensive pistol, most of your defensive situations are short range. So starting out at like a seven yard range or something, a lot of people like to go and shoot from some far distance, but realistically for a defensive handgun, that's not usually the case. So really practicing up close and getting the fundamentals down to where you are able to hit accurately is just as much, if not more important uh, than trying to get out a little further or whatever. And these are not really marksmanship guns. So you need to kind of the, the right tool for the right job, right? So you want to practice with this one in a more practical distance type situation. So I'm going to give it a quick run. I haven't shot this gun very much at all. Um, so we're going to see how it goes. It did have kind of a stiff um, slide release on it, but the trigger on these is really good. So let's see how it shoots. So I'm shooting center mass at the big center target. And that did pretty good. Let's move over to the far right. Yeah, that was a little low into the left, more low than what I intended, but that's probably my me. So that one hit right where I expected it. That one hit right where I expected it. That one's a little bit left, I'm sure that was me. So we're gonna go back to the center target now. And I'm basically gonna try to stack them all in one small area. If you watch my other videos, I have a tendency to shoot left. I think it might be because of my stance. So there they went. That was the 115 grains. I'm gonna do another quick mag of those. All right, so let's get another mag of these 115 grain Winchesters and kind of see how they go. I'm gonna try to take my time. That one's still left. Let's go here. Tried to put that one right on it. Those are still hitting in the same place. So those are hitting really good. I'm gonna move down to the bottom. That was higher than where I wanted. Okay. Yeah, they're all kind of stacking pretty close. Those are shooting really good. I'm real happy with these results out of this little bitty short barrel because to be able to stack them that close together out of a tiny little short barrel like this is really pretty good. All right, I've moved out to 15 yards on this. This is kind of our standard thing that we do. I'm sure you've seen my other videos where we kind of start close and move out a little bit. So we'll see how tight I can keep it. This is not the best place. Now I am running the extended magazine, but I have the 115 grain Winchesters in here. So let's see how this holds up. Get a good, solid grip on this thing because it's jumpy. All right, here we go. That was a total miss. All right, that was left. I'm gonna try not to jerk. I think that's me. Yeah, I pulled it back closer to center that time. There we go. Those are all kind of stacking right there. I think that was really low. Yeah, I'm stacking them all over to that left side. But you can see how tight that is. For a gun with a barrel this length to, to stick kind of that close, I know I raked them all the way off to the left, so that's not the world's greatest shooting. Um, but for them to pull in that close and not be super spread out at 15 with a, with a gun this size, that's that's a pretty serious accomplishment. I think if uh, you know I practiced with this enough or maybe just made a few minor adjustments, you could really tighten that up quite a bit. All right, this is the 124 grain. American Eagle, like I said, we're about 15 yards. 
let me see how this thing works out. All right, here we go. A little left where I want to be. I got bugs flying around me out here. close everything I shoot I'm shooting off left and that's been a habit for me Well, there we go. I did shoot left, but I really feel like as much as I'm running this thing, I find it unlikely that it's gonna be me because it, at some point, some of them would have pulled right or something. So I guess this is the same thing with the rear sight. It could have something to do with my grip, but all in all, these 124 grain, they seem to bunch up a little better. This gun seems to like those better than the Winchester 115. And in general, I usually like Federal Ammunition a little bit better than Winchester. If you guys want to comment what ammo you like to shoot in 9mm below, please do so. I would like to know. Especially if you've run this shield plus, let me know what ammo you put in it that you really like to shoot. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You can see how uh, the gun comes in the box. You can also see uh, how it shoots. Uh, even at 15 yards, I realized I kind of strafed off to the left there a little bit. But if you look at the bulk of those shots, they all kind of stacked up in an area about the size of a tennis ball. So for defensive accuracy, even at that range, uh, it was really, really good. The 124 grain seemed to work a little bit better. If you guys have run much ammo out there in the real world through this gun, let me know what you like, uh, especially if you have a good defensive round because we didn't really run anything in a hollow point. As you guys know, right now it's uh, early, uh, well, it's about April of 2021, and, and you know, ammo is not the easiest to come by right now, so we're not just burning through it like crazy. Uh, but all in all, you know, I think that this gun is probably going to wipe out their single stack series. They're getting rid of the original shield and they're uh, in the, you know, the Gen 1 version. They're only going to have the single stack Gen 2 version of the shield and then this double stack version. If I were them, I'd probably just discontinue the single stack. It's not covered in my video but uh, there's some other videos out there that show them like on top of each other and there's really no size difference between it and the single stack, especially in the areas that it matters like slide thickness and things like that. There's only a mild, mild increase in grip width uh, from the double stack magazine and that's not gonna be something that is really going to affect uh, anybody in a practical sense. And the little bit of added weight from having another, uh, I guess it was five or six rounds, because I believe the original single stack is a seven rounder. Uh, so if you use the extended mag here, you got the 13 rounds. Uh, it's not gonna really add a lot of weight. So for me, it's a no brainer. This is the only choice as far as the shield goes. And this is the one that I would go with. You can tell it's a good shooter. I'm sure it'll take over the world just like uh, the original shield did. So as you guys know, uh, the gun community is a family. So y'all be nice to each other. Hey, you know, it really helps us out if you'll subscribe and like, you know, smash the sub button, follow us there on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and until I see you next time, y'all take it easy. What's up, guys? Today is something that I've really been looking forward to. This is the Smith & Wesson... <laughs> Wesson... America!